right next. Ask you again, are you happy tonight? Yeah. I'm excited because I feel good. And when I get to going like we was going here this morning, I want to sing that song again. <laughs> I feel good. But God has been good to us. And he's going to be good to us until he comes back after us. Whatever you're going through, God already knows. He, he knew before you got in the car to get here or before you walked in the door. And he wants to help each one of you in a very special, special way. Thank you, Pastor Sarton, for allowing me to be here. I'd like to read tonight in Daniel chapter 3, verse 14. Daniel chapter 3, and begin with verse 14 through 18. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do you serve, do not you serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up. Now, if you be ready that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the saxbutt, the psaltery, and the decimal, and all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, but if you worship not, you shall be cast into the same hour into the midst of a burning fiery furnace and who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego answered and said unto the king O Nebuchadnezzar we are not careful to answer thee in this matter if it be so our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us out of thine hand O king but if not be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy God, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. I, I, I want to talk to you just for a few minutes tonight on the subject. Can you shout on a maybe? <laughs> can, can you shout on a maybe? That last verse, number 18. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy God, nor worship the gold image which thou hast set up. We're not careful to answer thee. I, I don't think we have anything to be careful about when it comes to worship. You can be seated for just a few moments. Can you shout on a maybe? It may be that God will heal you. It may be that God will bless you. Well, that's not enough. Well, I'm going to tell you what. When you learn, I, I wonder, uh, when these three guys were thrown into the fire furnace, and it wasn't an ordinary fire, uh, the Bible says they heated the fire seven times hotter than it had been. And the way they normally done it, they put a pot of lead or a piece of lead in that fire. And when the fire got hot enough to melt the lead, which is 600 degrees, lead becomes liquid at 600 degrees. Uh, the 
king was so upset because they didn't bow down at the beginning. He turned and he says, I want you to heat it up seven times hotter, 4,200 degrees. That is the temperature of fire and brimstone that God's going to destroy this world with. Well, you're talking about hot. Now, my message won't be quite that hot, but um, I wish you'd respond that hot. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Driving down the road when God does a simple thing for me, I have to respond. I do, I respond. One time, driving down Highway 49, coming from Jackson to the coast, um, I was driving along and I... I'd looked for a service station and couldn't find it. There was nothing open that particular night, and I was out of gas. And I finally, I said, well, God, uh, you filled up my grandfather's car before, and I've heard of different preachers that you fill up their car. Uh, if you had filled up mine, I would show gr much gratitude. And all of a sudden, that needle who was resting down below the red mark started rising and I watched it and almost wrecked watching it and when it pegged full I pulled her on the side real gently and got out and danced in the middle of highway 49 <laughs> oh lord you say well I wouldn't have done that well I, so now I want to ask you how do you think Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego. How do you think they responded when they threw them in the fire? And the men who threw them in were burned to a crisp and there was not even any ashes left of them. It just, they were gone. 4,200 degrees. That's what rained down on that place in Israel that time. And everything was consumed. And... Um, I believe I mentioned this 40, 50 years ago when I was here. <laughs> no, it wasn't quite that long, maybe 25 years ago. Uh, my records show I've been preaching here since 72, so that's older than most of you that are here tonight. And you wouldn't even thought of. Maybe God's thinking about you right now. I hope he is. But you know, these guys, uh, w when God does something good for us, I, I was down in uh, South America, I believe it was South America, and uh, I, I, I was preaching and I told the pastor there, uh, Brother, uh, the missionary, I can't think of his name now, uh, I, I turned to him and I said, Brother, uh, God, that, that, that guy sitting right over there, he can't understand me, so you'll have to tell him that God's going to give him a car tonight. And said, uh, he said, Brother Bourne, that guy rides a bicycle. He said he was in this church and God called him to a town 15 hours from here and he got his wife and his seven kids and they rode a bus to that town and started a church. He's been there 18 months and they're already running 200. He said, he don't have a car, he has a bicycle. I said, well, he's gonna leave here in a car tonight. He needs a car and God, God's got a man right now he's talking to somewhere in town going to drive up and he's going to give him a car. And so, uh, oh, Lord, I don't know why I can't think of that missionary's name. Um, and so I said, tell him. He said, uh, Brother Bourne, I can't do that. I said, sure you can. I said, what's his name? I'll tell him. 
So uh, finally he said, well, I'll, I'll tell him. But he said, Brother Warren, I think you need to be a little cautious. I said, I'm being cautious. I want the man to know that he's going to get a car tonight. The building was packed out, and there's only two cars in the parking lot. One of them was the missionaries. I don't know who the other one was, but no one had cars. And uh, I said, God's going to give that man a car. And um, finally I said, tell him. And so he turned and started speaking in Spanish, and he was telling him, and the man said, glory, adios. I said, come on, man. That's the only response you can give? Glory adios. And about that time, the back door opened and a well-dressed man stepped in and he's looking around. And one of the guys went back and asked him if he could help him. And he said, well, yes, sir, I'm, I'm looking for the man in charge here tonight. And they said, well, he's up there. And they pointed up to the front and he said, um, uh, I, I was in my office and says, a voice spoke to me. I'm not a Christian man, he said, no, but a voice spoke to me. And I'll just use this for a piece of paper. He said, uh, and told me to take the title to my new vehicle and bring it down to that church and there would be a man there that you will give this to. And the keys will be in the car outside. I didn't understand what he was saying because I, I didn't understand all the words of Spanish. I, I understand a, a few words like um, glory adios. <laughs> so I, I turned to the missionary and I said, sir, what, what's he saying? He said, So he, he walked up and handed this uh, title to this new vehicle, handed it to the missionary. And I said, is that the car I'm talking about? He said, I said, give it to him. So he walked over and told him in Spanish that this guy here is giving you a car. And so, again, he was very responsive. He said, glory adios. <laughs> That's the way some of you are responding around here tonight. <laughs> and if you get what God's wanting to give you, you're going to have to respond. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. <laughs> oh, Lord, have mercy. So when church was over, this man and his wife and his seven kids got in that car and drove back 14 hours back across the mountains to where they were building a church. And uh, Brother, uh, well, still can't think of his name. I said, missionary? I said, uh, he said, don't say it, Brother Bourne. I said, if I tell you that God's going to give someone something, why don't you believe me? He said, Brother Bourne, do you know how hard that would be to do? If I told you that tomorrow God's going to give you a new house, I told you God was going to give you a new car. If I told you, you'd be blessed above measure. So my point is this. How do you think Shadrach, who was the leader, how do you think he responded in that fire? Glory adios. 
I think when he looked back and those guys that picked him up and throwed them in, bound hand and foot, and he, he looked back and they were gone <laughs> that quick. There was nothing left of them. But here they were in 4,200 degree temperature in that fire. I don't know how they got it that hot. But it got so hot, I think they were just standing there saying, Glory to our God. No, I really don't. This is what I feel like was happening. They got to dancing, and the fire said, Boy, it's burning them good. <laughs> it did burn. It burned the bands. It was on their hands and feet. And I think Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was having a Holy Ghost time. If God delivered you out of the most improbable thing and thing that you have, has got you tied to the ground, and some of you just tied to the pew, but uh, if he loosed you from that pew tonight, I wonder how you would respond. Yeah. Hallelujah. You know, I'm... <laughs> can, can you shout? Someone said, well, it may be... Let me find that part. Um... Uh, And Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do you serve God? Do you serve my gods, nor worship the golden image that I set before you? Now, if, it, now, if ye be ready, that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the saxbutt, the psaltery, and the decimer, and all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the image which I have made, well, but if ye worship not, ye shall be cast in that same hour into the midst of the burning fire furnace. And who is it that God shall deliver you out of my hand? And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said unto him, O king, we're not careful to answer you in this matter. If it be so, our God to whom we serve is able to deliver us out of the burning fire furnace. And if he deliver us out of the king. Part. Let me read that again. If, if it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us out of the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, but if not, we're going to shout anyway. Whether you do it or not. We'll go out in a burning flame of fire, but we're not going to bow down to the world. Oh, my Lord, have mercy. What, what would it take to get us to believe that it, it don't matter how, how impossible that it seems? You said, Brother Bourne, you're not going through what we're going through. Maybe not. But if I'm not, you got more to worship God for than I do. First of all, you're here. And Brother Triplett, God's going to answer your prayer that you prayed this morning. Just a building. Not just a building, but a paid for building. Just a car. Oh, hallelujah. Uh, I, I think of that vehicle I rode up here in. Uh, God bless me. You know, I, it was probably several years ago when I told about this, but 
I was at this place up in uh, Illinois, I believe it was, yeah. Indiana. And uh, I, I, I told them, I said, I'm leaving tonight. They said, well, Brother Bourne, you're supposed to preach our special anniversary service. I said, but I'm gone. And he said, well, that, that, that won't work. I said, well, I'm sorry. When I leave here tonight, I'm gone. That was on a Friday night, and I was supposed to be there Saturday and Sunday morning, Sunday night, and preach 25th anniversary for this preacher. And boy, he, he didn't like it. I'll put it that way. And uh, he went to the pulpit, and he said, uh, Brother Bourne's leaving, and if you ask me if I'm upset, I'm upset. I'm supposed to preach my 25th anniversary. Now he's fixing to leave here. He said, tomorrow afternoon at 5 o'clock, this is on a Saturday now, he said, uh, I don't care if you're working or where you're working or what you're doing, if you're not here at 5 o'clock tomorrow afternoon, don't ever come back. And I said, that one and so I told my wife I said we better get out of here quick because they're fixing to hang us so we got in the car and we took off we packed up everything and we left while we were going the preacher across town or the evangelist across town uh we was on the south side, and he was on the north side of this large town. And, and uh, he called me and said, Brother Bourne, uh, I was getting ready for church tonight. And, and uh, one of the, uh, I don't know if it was a deacon or he felt like he was anyway. He went to the evangelist, and he said, uh, we don't like you. And we want you to leave now. He said, well, where's the pastor? He said, well, he does what we tell him. And we're telling you to get in your car and get out of here. And so I said, what are you doing? He's, I said, what do I need to do, Brother Bourne? I said, get in your car and get out of there. I said, I'm on the road. I'll probably catch up with you. You'll catch up with me somewhere on the side of the road. I said, uh, I don't know which way you're going, but uh, whatever, you need to get out of town too. And so he said, me and my wife's packing right now. We're fixing to leave. And I said, I'll catch up with you. Anyway, they were traveling, and all of a sudden, a tornado was coming towards that town and we were both ahead of it <laughs> and it was a category five which killed 274 people and the people the, the, the two men who claims to be the head of the church uh, they their wives and their three children were caught up in that tornado and they didn't make it. The members of the church where I was pastoring, they, they didn't want to be in a position where they could never come back again, like the pastor said to them. And I thought he was a little hasty with what he was saying, but uh, everybody was there at 5 o'clock. Everybody. And all of a sudden, they looked in this, this tornado it was one mile wide on the ground, massive. It was coming straight towards the church. It was too late to run, and they stood there in horror and said, God, you got to help us. And that tornado turned and went up Interstate 54, I believe, or 64, and uh, it crossed all the way across Joplin, Missouri, the hospital was in the path of it, and it took that hospital, that huge building, and twisted it on its axis. But not one of the people that was a member of that church where I was preaching lost their life. They just stood there in horror and watched it 
spin and started going down the interstate, and here it was following us. If I'd have knew it was behind me, I'd have been breaking the speed limit. And you would have too. What am I preaching about? What if he will? What, what if God decides to bless you in spite of you? Now, it's not going to be in spite of. He's going to do it because he wants to. And boy, is he ever going to bring you out. Hallelujah. I wish I could think of that doctor's name. It was a funny name, foreign name. And uh, he had this big plaque on the wall where he had won the Nobel Peace Prize for medicine. And he said, I wouldn't live. He didn't know what he is talking about. Hallelujah. And when I walked out of there, he, he said, uh, you still got it. I said, not if God touched me. I said, you didn't find it on the x-ray. You didn't find it in your test. He said, no, but I know it probably went to your head. And I said, 14 pounds? I said, no, no, there's not 14 pounds of cancer in my head. But this February passed. I told you this morning, he said, it's not there. It's not anywhere in your body. There is no sickness in your body. Oh, hallelujah. If I would have died, that would have been okay. But God let me live so I could be here tonight. And he gave me the message to tell you. But what if he don't? But he's going to. I got your email. Do we want to challenge what they said? I believe the email said you didn't get what you was looking for. You want to challenge that? You know, yes, sir. How, how would you respond if this next week you got a call and say, well, we changed our mind? Hallelujah. You are the mighty God. You are wonderful. Enough. So, If it be so, our God whom we served is able to deliver us out of the burning fire furnace and he will deliver us out of the hand of thy, thy hand, O king. But if not, be it known to thee, O king, <laughs> that we will not serve thy God nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. So uh, I, I'm going to shout on a maybe. Not because God has done something, but because he has a power to do it. <laughs> Sir. I, I know you've been blessed in the past. I don't know how things are right now, but uh, it's going to get better. Yes, sir. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Can, can, you, can you shout on that? Shout on that. Yes, sir. You are my You are my church. You are my I'm going to shout on it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All that Satan strips out of your hand. God said, I saw that. And I'm going to 
show you, and I'm going to put it back in your hand. <laughs> what seems like an impossible situation, God said, I saw that. but I'm going to respond whether he does or not. And so my question again was, how do you think the three Hebrew boys were responding in that fire? Maybe the king said, they're burning. Look at them. Whoa. Whoa. He said, well, I don't act like that. Well, try it. Whoa. Depending. You know, I applied for a job one time when I was just a teenager, 19, I believe, to sell insurance. And I'm not a salesman. And so they interviewed me, and I didn't get the job. Because they asked me certain questions. And some of those questions, I said, oh, I couldn't do that. And they said, well, we don't want you in this field. Well, I didn't want to be in there anyway. <laughs> but I'm asking, you don't have to do this. You can sit there like a knot on a log and go home and say, that preacher thinks I'm going to get up and act a fool in church. How would you act in the fiery furnace if it was 4,200 degrees and you was walking around? Hey, King. Hey, I'm, I'm still here. <laughs> Hands ain't tied. <laughs> My feet are not bound. You know why God broke the bounds off his feet? So he could dance a little bit. I believe they were dancing before the Lord in that 4,200 degree fire. And if the fire seems like it's burning around you so hot that you don't know how you can make it, dance anyway. Hallelujah. Dance anyway. If it don't happen, dance anyway. If it does happen, dance anyway. <laughs> you know, these guys up here, they do their job. Playing the music, playing the bass, playing the drums. Maybe that's enough. But sometimes, sometimes God wants to, that fellow to jump out over that wall and then to throw that bass down or get up and say, music or not, I'm going to give God a, a little praise. And if all you can do is that, do that. If all you can do that. But if all you can say is glory, adios, say it. We're going to give God the honor. Oh, hallelujah. God heard that prayer, Brother Triplet. God will do anything. God will do anything. God will do it. Oh, Lord. All it cost you was a dozen oysters. 
Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Pida. Everything that the devil blocks, God will door. Oh Lord, have mercy. You need to give God a lot of praise. Doctor, You said, Brother Born, I'm old. Well, they say I'm old too, but here I am. Yeah, but you're well. You could be. The same God that took all the pain out of my body can take it out of yours. Same God that needs to heal your knee, he can heal yours. He heal mine. The same God that can restore the fact that you can't, where am I? You know, you get a certain age, you're supposed to. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? You know, I, I, I reached that place where I couldn't get everything straight. But when God raised me up five years ago out of that M.D. Anderson, he didn't just remove the cancer. He restored my soul. And he restored my mind. And that I think positively. <laughs> and he can do it. My oh, Lord. God can take maybe young men. I see these young men here and some over here. Uh, God can place you all in an area like he, he did this guy over in Alabama the other day. Uh, I was over there preaching in Alabama uh, this year, and uh, this this guy in church, just an ordinary young man, and I, I told him, I said, God told me he's going to make you superintendent of that company you've been working for. He said, Brother Bourne, there's a lot of smart guys out there, and I'm not one of them. I said, but when God gets through with your mind, 
Boy, is he going to ever do you in. Not bad, but good. And so one of the main machines broke down, and they couldn't fix it. They brought every man they could bring in. Finally, they brought the man in who made the machine, and he worked on it and worked on it. He said, I just can't do it. And here's this guy from the church. He's standing over there looking at him. He said, I know what to do. He said, look, I made this machine. I know how to fix it. He said, well, fix it. <laughs> he couldn't fix it. So finally he turned, he says, what would you do to fix it? He said, that one little part there, I'd take that out and put another on. It'll cost you about 15 cents. Guess who's the superintendent now? <laughs> oh, Lord. Now, he walks around with a white shirt on. <laughs> oh, he said, I'm not qualified. God can qualify you. Another machine went down, and he just stood there and says, do this, 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 this. He didn't even know that. But he spoke what the Holy Ghost gave him, and he just, and they done that, and boom, this big machine went back into firing range. Oh, hallelujah. He said, Brother Bourne, what do you need? I said, a thousand two-by-fours. I need 56 2 by 12s, 24 feet. He said, you got it. He said, the company's going to give them to you because they give me the authority several times a year to just whatever you want to give to this person, you just give it to them. And so he says, it's coming. <laughs> It's coming, son. It's coming, son. I know you're already smart. When God gets through you, instead of having an IQ of 140, maybe, how about 280? <laughs> God knows how to rearrange things to where you think right and when you come to church you know how to respond at just the first little spark and they ain't uh, maybe I shouldn't use the word ain't they ain't nothing as important as responding when pastors up here preaching you say well what if he's what if he's preaching real low Sometimes he stops and he waits on you to respond and, and you look around. When he, when he gives you 15 seconds. How, how old are you, sir? How, how old are you? 74. Oh, you young squirt. Thank <laughs> you. God's not through with you. Pardon that. Pardon me for saying that. That's all right. Not. God's not through with a lot of you. And yes, God's going to do it. You want to tell God what you need? Blow it in my hands all the time. The Lord. You need the Lord all the time. You need the Lord all the time. Do you mind saying what you want from God? I just want to go to heaven. Oh, that's a good one. I want to go to heaven. And to get there, if you're going to a place where you're going to shout for a thousand years, how do you think you ought to shout down here? About 15 minutes? <laughs> if we get over there, 
there's only going to be 30 minutes of silence in heaven, and that's going to be right before I get there. Because when I get there, it's going to be wild. <laughs> So why don't we just give praise the best we know how right now. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.